while I put my glasses on. What in your life gives you a strong sense of contentment? What in your life right now gives you a strong sense of contentment? You got two minutes. <laughs> okay, we're going to put that in the yes column. Heat makes us feel content on days like today and in forecasts like today. I like it. What else makes you feel content? Huh? Good health. Absolutely. When we feel good, we're a little more content. Miss Beverly. Ooh, I like it. I'm in. A good meal. Get your belly full. Sit in front of the fireplace. A little blanket. You like me, you like an electric blanket. It's a good spot. Okay. A lot of things that make us feel content, right? When all the family's happy and healthy, when we don't have a lot of drama going on at our house or our church, when we feel good, when those around us feel good, when people feel good about us, we're content. Well, how can we be content spiritually? How can we really be at a good spot within our spirit? Well, let's go to 1 John chapter 3, verses 13 through 18. 1 John chapter 3, verses 13 through 18. The setting, though, is the Apostle John was the only one of Jesus' original disciple who was not martyred, except Judas. He spent his life ministering in Ephesus until he was exiled on the Isle of Patmos. He wrote his first letter late in the first century to churches facing crisis. He warned them to reject false teachers and assured them of their salvation in Jesus Christ. In this passage, John focused on a key theme in these writings. There is confidence in God's love. 1 John 3, 13, the Bible says, Do not be surprised, Christian brothers and sisters, if the world hates you, rejects you, doesn't believe what you say. We know that we have passed from death when we were lost to life in Jesus as Christians because we love one another. We love the brothers and we love the sisters. One evidence of you being a Christian is if you love other Christians. According to Scripture, we know that we pass from death to life because we love our brothers and sisters. The one who does not love remains in death. Everyone who hates his brother or sister is a murderer. Strong words there, class. Jesus talked about that too, didn't he? Kind of used a similar analogy, didn't he? Everyone who hates his brother or sister is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life residing in him. This is how we have come to know love. He laid down his life for us. That's love. We should also lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. If anyone has the world's goods and he sees a fellow believer in need, but he withholds compassion from him when you have the means to help another brother or sister? How does God's love reside in him? Little children, let us love not in words and speech, but let us love in action and in truth. Amen? It's a lot, isn't it? There's a lot there. Okay, so we're talking about love in place of fear. That is the point. That is the title today. Love in place of fear. And here we have John who's kind of seen it all. Been there, done that. He has a closet full of T-shirts. 
He was with Jesus. He was a disciple. He was there during Jesus' crucifixion, his resurrection. When Jesus shows back up, he was there when the Holy Spirit came. And he's been there after everybody went home. He's watched all of his buddies that he grew up with be murdered for believing in Jesus. He's the only one left. And he's still writing the Bible anyway. Amen? And he's still (laughs) sending these letters out to these churches like at Ephesus. Man, what a teacher was John. Could you imagine him teaching a Sunday school lesson? Or doing a tent revival? Wow. I mean, this guy had seen it, lived it, and is sharing it. And this is what he says. And this is what was ordained by the Heavenly Father to become our Bible. And this is the Word of God when when we're talking about our our fears and when we're talking about love. And he's like, look, man, good or bad, here's the deal. If you say you love people, but your actions don't back it up, we've got massive problems. Remember we talked last week? You can say that you're a Christian. You can sleep in a garage that you turn into a car. You can go to church every day for 95 years. Does that make you a Christian by just walking in that door? No. The air conditioning maintenance man can walk in and out of that door working on the air conditioning unit. That don't make you a Christian. What makes you a Christian? Placing your trust in Jesus. And when... God, who is love, moves into our lives, we're going to automatically start looking a little bit like him. And as we continue to grow in our faith, more and more and more, we're going to look like him. I'll probably use Christmas Village in this lesson five or six times today because it's been really cool. Couple. That's tonight, too. Let me, tell you, let me tell you a couple cool things for me last night as it talks about loving other people and about our church. <laughs> Andy Neely come up with this Christmas village about a year and a half ago. I've never done anything like that here. A lot of people are like, eh, ah, okay, whatever. Last night, I'm standing out in front of the in front of the church, there's a Christmas tree lit up out there, a big tall one. A little circle thing out there with the Ten Commandments in it, Mr. Joe. Got pretty lights on it, too. Out front, there's this Christmas tree. And then there's this stained glass window behind it. And then there's this steeple that's just kind of like the trademark of West Jackson. When you see it, you can see it from the bypass. And there's Pastor Steve and a handful of choir members and probably a hundred people singing Christmas carols around it. We had hoped to have had about 800 little kids come through. There's a station out front in the foyer to where they're doing a Christmas village, and it's really four of the countries that we partner with in missions. And we're kind of doing a Christmas story with them to where this is like in Guatemala. We do a lot of work in Guatemala. Well, they can't do Christmas trees. So they pick up branches off the ground. They can't cut them down. You can't cut trees down there. So they gather up limbs, and they make a little tree. So when the kids come in, they get a little passport. They're going to go around these four countries that we do missions with. And one of their crafts for Guatemala, on green paper, they traced a little hand out and put their name on it. And then they roll it up, pull it back out, and we staple it on the wall for a Christmas tree limb. And that's how we teach these little kids about different Christmases, and then they get a 
passport and a stamp for Guatemala, and then they go to Canada. And so it's very intentional that as families come in, we're able to start sharing the gospel. And they get a little bag, and there's some stickers in there for them to do at home about the nativity and Jesus. We had hoped throughout the weekend we would get about 800 kids was kind of our goal. It's a lot. Yesterday, how many came through, Tarsha? <laughs> We're out of supplies. How, how many, babe? We have a whole nother day today. It's been amazing. It's been amazing. And guess what? The overwhelming majority of them don't go here. Do not even go here. And they're bringing their children into our front doors. And they're staying in these long lines. And we're just not handing out candy canes. <laughs> you don't just put a bucket out and get Christmas candy and move on. They're stopping and they're waiting in line while these little kids do these little crafts and they hear about the Lord. And the reason these chairs are that way, every hour, starting at 4 o'clock yesterday, what is it, Tarsha? Until, until at 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 5 shows or 6 shows, there's a show right here of a nat nativity scene and a choir. This room is full. As people sit right here on the hour, listening and watching the Christmas story be told. Is that not incredible? And then, and I gotta I gotta move on. I'm watching these young 25-year-old guys and girls with little West Jackson service stickers on, going all around and working. And then I'm watching them work the hayride. And then I'm watching them work out here, these little games outside. Future leaders of our church, Trey Teal. He's out there work. Baker Evans, Caroline Miller Evans. They're on that stinking hayride trailer all night in the cold with these kids just jumping on there, and they just go round and round and round and round. And then we're standing in the foyer last night, and they're just talking about how incredible it is. There's a lot of love going on our campus this weekend. This thing's going to blow up again next year. And we're not just handing out peppermint candy canes and singing jingle bells. Yes, ma'am, we're going to get you a microphone because people cannot enjoy this stuff right here. Hang on. Hello, hello. Okay, Kevin was talking about uh, all these 25-year-olds working. Well, there were some of us <clears throat> year old working, too. <laughs> I was actually in this room, watched the play twice. We had some carolers. We caroled to kind of kick off the, the, that. And I watched the kids as they watched the play. They were enthralled with it and all like that. And uh, it was, I was just chills all over. Earlier when, uh, before they started, I, that, that table back there that said, do you need prayer, was over here, and Jim Blankenship was, was there. And I sat down there as we came in early. Well, this, he has several different Bibles, and they give them away, you know, whatever people want. Some of them are such small print. Uh, Jim said people can't read them. But a little girl came up. She probably was eight or nine, I'm going to guess, with her dad. And looking at the Bibles. And Jim, he said, look at this. And it was for the kids. And he said, do you ever get scared? And she said, yeah. He said, are you ever afraid? And he turned right to this part. He knew this child's Bible. He says, this Bible also talks to you when you need help with being scared. And her eyes were getting so big. And he said, you can have that. 
She said, I can have it? <laughs> and she, he said, yes, take it home with you. It's a lot. A lot of good stuff. I'm going to hold this because I can walk to you. Okay? So when you talk in a minute, I might just throw it now. So we're talking about love and loving other people and showing God's love. And as we continue to fill our hearts with love, you know what fear does? Moves on out. And what John is telling us as Christians, look, guys, if we really are brothers and sisters of Jesus Christ, there's a few things that just have to look like this. And again, this class does a lot of things well. One example in here says, look, if you've got worldly goods, if you have a cabinet full of Kroger <laughs> in your pantry and a fellow believer is hungry next door, I mean, the people in this class without a second's hesitation would get a box or a bag and fill it up with food and go next door and give it to that Christian. That's what, that's what the Bible's saying. But if you can't, if God, I've got all this food at my house and I look out my back window and I see Mr. Ray Smith and he looks hungry out there because Miss Smith has had to go visit family for Christmas and left Mr. Ray here for a couple days without her good home cooking. And I know he's hungry. And I'm just sitting there eating my, <laughs> my big fat steak dinner and my cheesecake. And there's not something inside of my heart that moves me. Then there's not something inside of my heart. <laughs> and so as we see needs, we need to love other people. And it transcends into loving even non-believers, lost people. A lot of lost little kids walking up and down these hallways. A lot of them. A lot of them. A lot of lost little kids who are not going to have a mom and daddy take them to church. All over our campus last night. We never know what the Holy Spirit will do and plant a seed. And it's amazing to see some of these little kids. And some of them, their light bulbs just go on. They cut their little hand out for that Christmas limb and I stayed in there. I didn't work in there much. Horses there all day. <laughs> I get in there to help for a little while last night. And these little kids come up, man, they are sharp as a tack. They want to do it to themselves. They want to cut it all out. They want to ask the question, what is this handprint for? And it's like, holy smokes. Man, we need that little girl to tell her mom and daddy to bring her to West Jackson. That's what Christmas Village is about. And as I left last night with all these thoughts swirling in my head, I know a lot of these kids went home and asked 500 questions to their parents last night. And I know a bunch of them wanted to go through that little bag and do the rest of those little crafts where you have to kind of deal with the manger scene. Beautiful thing. That replaces our fear. Let us not love in word or speech but in actions and in truth. Even Jesus said, everyone who hates his brother or sister is like a murderer. You have heard that it was said to our ancestors, do not murder, Jesus says in Matthew. Whoever murders will be in sub subject to judgment. But I tell you, everyone who is angry with his brother or sister will be subject to judgment. And so being a murderer in our heart, if I really don't like people, if I really would be fine if I never talked to a person again, another believer again forever, or that something bad really happened to them, I really don't love them. And for believers, guys, it's got to be different. And look, nobody understands getting your fenders dented as much as I do in here, I promise, okay? I'm still in the workforce. I still work for the public. I still work for people who profess to know Jesus, and I work for a bunch of them who don't. And it's not getting any easier out there 
when people will just lie. And a lot of them, Aaron Jackson claimed to be, they go to church and hold positions in their church and they act like heathens. But I have to pray, my Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth just like it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive me of all my horrible sins as I forgive those who sin against me. Sometimes I might have to pray that for a week <laughs> or a couple weeks because of the way that some people treat you, talk about you, do to you. And as we pray and ask God to help us to love some of those that are harder to love, just funny, over time, Start kind of getting over it. Then over time, you start kind of wanting to see how can I reach out to them? How can I show them the love of Jesus to show them that I'm not like them? And then over time, as you keep praying, you realize, well, if that guy doesn't change, he's going to go to hell forever. And so as we pray, God takes some of these emotions that we have naturally as a man or as a woman that many people in our life would say, you're justified by going back off on that dude. He's an idiot. <laughs> Tell him he's an idiot. <laughs> Give him a piece of your mind. As you pray, the love of God begins to do something that I can't do. And I'm not going to tell you it only takes five minutes for me to get there. It takes longer than five minutes for me sometimes to get there. But God does what only God can do. He starts to change some of that with love. And then you're trying to figure out ways that maybe you can reach out to them. And it takes the Holy Spirit in our lives to help us get there. Okay, got to move. I got to move. All right, question. Let's do three. Question number three. I do want you to talk about this one. How does knowing that you're loved give you a sense of security? How does knowing that you have people love you give you a sense of security? How can you group? How does knowing that you love give you security? Hang on. Look behind you. Oh, well, I can talk loud. They can't hear you at home. You just know that there's always somebody there that's got your back. Mm. The older I get, the bigger of a deal that is for me to know that somebody's got my back. It just means more. Amen. All right, somebody else. <clears throat> right here. Oh, I've got one, too. I can get him, too, Mr. Joe. Sorry. Forgot I stole one. I've got two, actually. If it didn't, I wouldn't come to Sunday school. If it didn't, what does that mean? Expound on that. <clears throat> what was the question? <laughs> I can't remember two things. How knowing time. that your love gives you a sense of security. How knowing that your love gives you a sense of security. By coming to Sunday school. To experience love? Yes. yes. So finding a place where there is love helps you feel secure. It's good. Anybody else? Uh-oh. Now, hey, everybody, let's, let's listen to this one now. I, I, one of my favorite people here now. I don't usually speak up in, during class, but I have a, a story There's. Went about two years in the making, and I'll put it in about two minutes. It's a story of two men, two brothers here in Jackson, two businessmen. One is 80 years old, and the other one is about 77. They hate each other. They hated each other. This had been some time ago. 
they owned a piece of property, which is now a senior citizen's home on it, and I was selling it, but I couldn't get the two together. They hated each other. So I'm on a fast forward now. We finally worked it out and got to the closing table, and he told me, he says, um, I hate my brother. He's sitting over there now, 80 years old. I said, I have a letter I want to read to him. He reached down in a little folder and pulled out a letter and says, I no longer count you as my brother. Now, we're talking about 77 and 80 years old. I read, <laughs> read it this morning. It says, uh, who hates his brother or sister is a murderer. I thought about that how they went through life hating each other. It was rubbing off on their grandchildren. Absolutely. They was beginning to hate each other. And if I, if, I, if I could have done anything, I would have, but I didn't know where to start. Mm -hmm. But anyway, wow. that just, I just couldn't keep that. Wow. Bringing that up. And, you know, <clears throat> thank you for sharing that. <clears throat> you know, that's a tool that Satan can use to keep people at odds, and you're right. How could they let their kids play together? Yeah, yeah. If they hated each other, how could they let they, their wives yeah. communicate together? How can you have Christmas at Mama's house <laughs> if they hate each other? Now, this younger one was an active member in his church. Oh, wow. And see that? Now, and that that's that's old, what I was saying a while ago. I don't know what, what he was, but in a way, when he read, said, I can no longer count you as my brother. That hurt. Yeah. Wow. And then, yeah, and sometimes these people profess to know Jesus Christ. Yeah. And right here, that scripture, guys, you can't be that way and know, and know Jesus. Now, we can have thoughts and we can get our feelings hurt sometimes, and that's why we just pray, God, Help me forgive my brother as I come to you, God, expecting and hoping and praying that you forgive me. I can't be forgiven for my sins if in turn I'm not willing to forgive my brother of his. That's just Bible 101. But that doesn't come within our own being. That comes with the help, help of God. Thank you for sharing that, Mr. Gates. When you have a 95-year-old man talk, you've just got to pull up a chair and listen. Thank you. All right. Here we go. 1 John 4, 14 through 16. And we have seen and we testify that the Father has sent his Son as the world Savior, not as just the Jews or just Israel. This is for West Tennessee. We've seen and we testify that the Father sent His Son as the world Savior. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God remains in Him and He remains in God. And we have come to know and we have come to believe the love that God has for us. We've seen it. We've tasted it. God is love. And the one who remains in love will remain in God. And God will remain in him. Well, that's good. That's good right there, class. We've seen and we testified that God sent Jesus to be the world's Savior Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God remains in him and he in God. We come to know and believe that God, believe in the love that God has for us. God is love. The one who remains in love will remain in God. <clears throat> the one who remains in love, God will also remain in that person. <clears throat> How big a deal is love to the Father? Gee, you gotta go. You gotta go high on the list, guys. That love word. It's who he is. He's love. We can't be like him. We can't be in him. 
We can't be used through him if love in our lives isn't way up the list. Now, we don't hear this in Hollywood, do we? We like revenge. It sells movies. He had it coming to him. Really makes the way Jesus lived make sense. And you start reading this and thinking about this. And listen, guys, it's all the same thing. Jesus loved. Tarsha can't stand my glasses. I'm getting in trouble. <laughs> Thank you. I just got a spanking. <laughs> Jesus loved, he lived like love. He didn't return evil with evil. All of this that John is talking about is exactly what Jesus did. He had every reason to come down off that cross and, and make things right. <laughs> Hang on, I'm coming. I got you. Kevin, I made... I may be jumping the gun, but the scripture verse that you're reading from is 14 to 16. And I just read verse 20. Are you going to look at that? If not, we're not. We're going to get to 18. Okay. I challenge the class to read verse 20. I think the word love gets thrown around too easy today. I love this. I love that. What is true love? If you don't know Christ, you can never know true love. Kevin, my, my mother taught me that uh, you can't love anything but a person and God. You can't love, you know, uh, things that uh, material things you can't yeah. love them you may like them right but you can't you can't love them you know they use a couple of different words for love in the Greek I don't want to get ahead of myself over here for this for the for the Greek translator because I don't know what I'm talking about <laughs> but there are different levels of love different words for love and this godly love, uh, I think it's what we're talking about here. It, it's a special thing. It's not the love of chocolate cake, for sure. I was just going to say, love has a ripple effect. I was thinking of uh, several years ago, um, our son had had um, kidney surgery. He has a kind of a serious uh, kidney situation. And the church here helped him out, the, our Sunday school class did. And uh, uh, the middle grandson then was probably about eight or so. And he commented, and he said, well, Grandma, he said, we don't know those people at your church, and they don't know us. But he said, it's like we all know each other because wow. they do uh, so many good things for us. And actually, um, s some people had taken up an offering and had sent some money to the kids because Chad was out of work and Stacy was a stay-at-home mom. Well, Chad got better, got back to work, you know. And the next year at Christmas time, uh, their boys said, uh, we'd like to have um, a, a, in something so we can give some gifts to some kids that mm. need something at Christmas. And I thought, you know, what a ripple effect from our Sunday school class. Mm. And uh, so their, their other grandma was church secretary, and their grandpa preached in a lot of churches in the association. They, they could come up with quite a few people, you know. And so someone said, well, uh, and Chad and Stacy said, well, we will uh, give money and you can help us pick out things for some kids. And they said, well, we don't want to just pick out something and somebody take it to them. They said, let's have a party at our church and invite those kids. And then the other kids from the church came. And they said, and they'd ordered pizza, you know, and then they had the gifts for the kids. And I thought probably nobody in here knew they That's had right. that effect off in St. Louis. Wow. Isn't that beautiful? A ripple effect of love. Amen.
We never know how God waters these seeds, do we? Beautiful. Okay, we're going to jump to the end. Got two minutes left. Okay. 1 John 4, 17 and 18. <clears throat> In this, love is made complete with us so that we may have confidence in the day of judgment, because as he is, so also are we in the world. I'm going to read this again, guys. This is big. This is big. In this, love is made complete with us so that we may have confidence when you stand before God one day and expect eternal life in heaven with Jesus. How can you be confident that you're in the right line and that it's going to work out for you? How can we? Question of the ages. In this, the love is made complete within us so that we may have confidence in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we also in this world. There's no fear in love. Instead, Perfect love drives out fear. Because fear involves punishment. So the one who fears is not complete in love. It's good, isn't it? That's good. I could take about 45 minutes right there. I'm not going to. The Bible speaks for itself right there. How can you have confidence when you die? It's just love. What John says, he's seen it all. Been there, done that. He's got the t-shirts. Is how you know that when you die, you can stand in confidence before God. If you have this same love, that stamp of Jesus on your life to where you love your brothers, sisters, Sometimes they don't deserve it. Remember how we started? Don't get your fenders dented when this world hates you. A lot of us are pleasers. We want everybody to like us. I'm that way. It's not, it's not always that way, though, right? We want everybody to like us. Sometimes you can be as nice as you want to be. People don't want to receive it. Don't be surprised if the world hates you. But you can't be like the world if you claim to know Jesus. And if you claim to know Jesus, you need to understand that his Father's love and that that's going to be the signature thumbprint on you if you're really a believer. And you can't have it both ways because if you really have Jesus and you really have love, you're going to love your brother. And when you see believers without and you have, you're going to want to go help them. And we could stay all week telling stories of how this class has done that. And then that same love is the confidence that you need when you die and stand before a holy God one day. Because the same love that he and Jesus and the Holy Spirit has is the same love that will be standing in front of him. And it replaces fear. And in Jesus Christ, there is no fear. If God be for us, who be against us? Amen? Mr. Mr. Allen, I'm going to let you read verse 20. Hang on. Uh, most of, if, if you like him, I don't bring uh, my Sunday school book, uh, but I got my Bible here. And let me back up just one verse, Kevin. It's where you left off in 18. And verse 19 says, We love. Because he first loved us. I often wonder what love. Somebody asked him, what is love? You know. Uh, anyway, verse 20. This is one caught my eye. And it reads, if anyone says, I love God, and yet he hates his brother or sister, he's a liar. <laughs> that's, that's some good words right there. For the person who does not love his brother or sister he has seen, cannot love God 
because they've not seen. Wow. Now smoke that in your pipe. That's, right. that's Bible right there, ain't it? That's, that's some tough stuff. Thank you. I, that might have been a verse for your friends, Mr. Gates. As a believer, to read that, I'd be scared of getting a car and drive down the bypass. <laughs> I might have a car wreck because if you sit there and say you hate your brother and then you read that scripture, you don't have to be a seminary graduate to be able to cipher that one, right? Guys, thank you for what you have done at West Jackson. Thank you for what you are doing at West Jackson. And thank you for what you're going to do at West Jackson. Our church is kind of in a sweet spot. We got a lot of work to do. Got so much work to do. Oh, um, I just keep seeing Jesus lifted up at 580 Old Well. And uh, really excited about what God's doing. We're going to pray and then we're going to go into our prayer request. Father, we thank you for this time. God, we thank you for the love of Jesus. God, we pray that you help us show that love more and more and more and more every day. Give us of our sins in Jesus' name. Amen. Brother Joe.